Hello, Mark Crossfield here. The Golf Swing Weekly Fix Time. Uh, we've got lots of swings coming at you, lots of body movement kind of ideas today. We've got Golf Talk and we've also got Question of the Week. So loads to do as usual. Let's get stuck in. So two swings here where we're going to look at uh, how the hips move really. Uh, lots of swaying, uh, lots of movements here where the hips just run away from the upper body. The upper body just wants to uh, not stay on top of the hips. The hips want to kind of slide out from underneath each player which is going to cause a lot of issues and we're going to see a lot of issues here when we come down and hit the shots where the hips just cannot find any side bend through impact they're quite level for both of these golfers these guys are going to have more bend than they have side bend at impact so let's get out there and give them some help it's a very common problem we see the hips sway so as they start the back swing they start rotating they have side bend but they also have lateral hip movement as well now this causes many problems uh, it causes definite problems with club path where the club starts to come from funny angles often with this kind of body movement. What I want you to try and do, it's for me and my pupils where we have the biggest breakthrough with these kind of feelings is when you get them to actually feel the way they're turning. Try and get them to actually feel the different dimensions they're turning in. So what I mean by that, look, if I make a couple of swings here, not really holding the club, just putting it against my chest. And what I'm going to do, stand up straight and just simply turn my upper body on top of my lower body to start. So I feel like my upper body is turning on top of my uh, hips. Okay, don't think about separating, don't worry if you turn them both the same amount. Just feel that your upper body is turning on top of your hips. Then what you can do is add a side bend in. So feel your upper body turning on top of your hips. Then tilt the grip end of the club lower than the uh, head here. So I'm going to put a side bend in there. Left shoulder lower than right. Now from here, try and feel that your hips and shoulders, so your upper body is still turning pretty much on top of your hips. From there, if you just kick your right hip out, so just kick it out to the right, and feel the amount of stress that puts on the outside of my right foot, my right knee, all down this side, and from this position as well, I feel how difficult it is to not start attacking from that over the top angle. So just turn my upper body on top of my lower half, put a bit of side bend in there, kick the hip out, feel that, how that's gonna make you feel like it comes over the top. And what happens, as soon as people put that side, so if I now take my golf posture and try and put it into that other dimension, so I'm still gonna try and turn my upper body on top of my left, or sorry, turn my upper body on top of my lower half, and then just kick my hip out to the right, so my hip's gone outside the inside of my right foot, so I'm just swaying to the right. So I'm just kind of bolting the movement on. Now from here, to hit the ball, where I try and get this pocket higher than this one, get some side bend in there at impact, which is what you're going to need. You're going to need to have a little bit of this angle at impact. It's almost impossible for me. It's so difficult. I just feel like I want to compress down onto my lower half and keep my hips very level and spin them. So you can see by getting the order so wrong on the way back makes it very hard for you to get the order right into impact which is then why you find it so hard to create maybe consistent strikes or the distance that you want. So simple, just again get the club on your chest, take your posture and just practice turning almost like you're fixed over the ball. Try and turn your upper half on top of your lower half. Feel how your hips just stay inside your right foot. Get that movement into your mind. Understand how you're turning, side bending, and kicking, swaying. So understand how you're doing that. So take your posture. So you're turning. Simultaneously, you're side bending. So left shoulder's going lower than right. But then for you guys, at the same time, you're swaying. And it's that movement you want to take out. You've got to find what that movement in your mind. Find the feel of it. So I'm going to dress the ball here. Take the club across my chest. I'm going to tilt left shoulder lower than right as I rotate, but as I do that, I'm just going to try and keep my hip inside my right foot to not have that kick, feel that movement, and then try and hit a shot. Don't worry about how bad you hit the ball, it's not about hitting good shots this drill, it's about getting the feel 
So do another one this time. If shoulder lower than right, just feel like your upper body's turning on top of your lower half. When you get to the top, just kick your right hip out. Imagine trying to hit one from there, which is where you're going. Very hard to get into a good impact position where your left pocket feels like it's coming up higher than your right pocket. So again, left shoulder lower than right. I just feel like my hips are still inside my right foot. And then hit one. Put the other movement back in there, play with it. So I'm going left shoulder lower than right, kick my hips out, and then hit one. God, so much more of a swinging left feel. So you can see what I'm doing there. It's about playing with this. And you can do this without hitting balls. You can do it at home, don't need a club. Just start trying to imagine how this half and this half are relating to each other. So I'm going to turn, turn my shoulders without my hips swaying, get the feeling of where that feels. And then do another one. It's a golf posture, turning my shoulders, turning my hips, kick them out. Or even kick your hips out and turn and feel where that is. You've got to get that comparison. Feel where wrong is, which you do subconsciously. But rather than do it subconsciously, actually find where that position is and then practice where doing where right is. So we're talking about trying to turn your hip more over the inside of your right foot, turn your upper body, what feels to you a bit more on top of your lower half, which will then allow you to get the sequence of the downswing much, much better. I hope that helps. Let me know. You've got to start playing with the movement you're doing, understand the kick, the rotation, and the side bend, but at the same time, then try and take that kick out. Once you feel that you're doing that, try and do some swings where you take that movement out. Play with the wrong, play with the right. It gives you a much better chance of finding where that middle ground is. Hope that helps. So swing set through the app here, massive rotation on the back swing. So we're going to talk a little bit about trying to get you to calm down this shoulder turn. So lots of people might say to you, you over swing, which is a common phrase, but really what you're doing is turning your shoulders as far as I've seen anyone turn their shoulders. Also hips are pretty funky with the amount they're turning. This amount of turns is going to make it very hard for you to get through the ball with any level of consistency. It gets very blurry here because of the light, but we will see quite a lot of flipping down here at the bottom. Um, because you're literally going to work so hard to try and get into any impact position where the face is squaring up to the ball. So let's talk a little bit about rotation and give you a drill, trying to get you to calm down and how far you rotate your body on the backswing. So quite a common fault, see this a lot. Uh, so certainly see it a lot in younger males as well. It's interesting, isn't it? And so many people feel that you've just got to turn, 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 hit the ball hard and long and all those kind of things. What you've got to try and do is make a certain amount of stretch on the backswing, certain amount of turn, certain amount of separation where you try and turn your shoulders away from your hips a certain degree and stretch your arms. But you can go too much, so you can go beyond an efficient marker. If you can't do too much, it makes it harder to then get back the other way in the right sequence, in the right order. So for you, what we're seeing is we're seeing shoulders turning. Well, if this is zero, let's say this is 90 degrees. So when my left shoulder feels like it's level with my right behind me pointing at the ball, say, I mean, you're, oh, you must be 100 degrees on your shoulder turn, which then in turn makes my hips just go forever. Now, I mean, if I put myself in that amount of rotation, not only does the club make it quite easy to get the club long, it makes it very hard for me to get back the other way. And I definitely feel like I can only start with my hands and try and throw them at the ball. It feels very hard because I'm so rotated on the way back. My body is at kind of point break. It can't disassociate on the way down. It's stopped. It's kind of stuck as it gets there. So what I want you to try and do, do a few practice swings. This is going to feel really strange. You've got to try and get used to this. It's going to feel very odd. Where you just try and turn your left shoulder on your back swing short of the ball. So if I imagine there was, say, a club on my shoulder here, I'm just going to turn my left shoulder so it's short of the ball. Not turn it to the ball, or certainly beyond like you are. Um, and I'm going to try and hit a few shots at that. But as I do this, I want to try and feel as I make my backswing that my arms and my shoulders are turning away from my hips. And my hips are staying quite passive for the start. So my arms, shoulders moving, turning away from my hips. And then as soon as my left shoulder gets somewhere kind of a foot in front of the ball, I stop and start going the other way. To you, it's going to feel like a pitch. It's going to feel like you're not doing anything. But what it will do is it'll help you calm down this over rotation on the way back and hopefully get you a little bit more in sequence on the way down. So I'm just going to turn arms, shoulders away from hips. Hips stay quite passive to start. A bit of stretch. 
soon as my left shoulder to me feels like it's just left of the ball, so in front of the ball, I stop and then try and commit the other way. Great way of feeling a bit more of an efficient shoulder turn and hitting some hopefully more consistent strikes. So swing here, we've done this a lot in videos where the shaft plane is much steeper than the hand plane. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this today. Let's show you the example. This is a great example of how the shaft plane gets steeper than the hand plane, um, which we've talked about in a few videos coming down and to hit the ball. You can see how the shaft plane is considerably steeper than the other red line there, which is the hand plane. Let's just talk a little bit more about this concept and hopefully make you all a bit clearer. So more shaft plane coming down steeper than hand plane. We've done lots of videos on this recently. Um, and I think lots of you are really understanding it, which is great, but I still get lots of comments from people who don't quite get it. So what we see from this guy is obviously we see the, what we know as the over the top, but the biggest thing I see is the desire to try and throw the shaft down steeper than the hand plane. So if the hands are coming down, say, on X plane, the shaft is a steeper angle than that hand plane. And that, for most people, is where lies the issue. Now, there's lots of reasons people do this. It can be to do with body turn, which we're talking a lot about today, and hip bend and rotations. It can be to do with those. So I definitely advise going and seeing someone who can help you more in depth. But what I would start playing with is this concept of getting the shaft plane to feel like it's flatter than the hand plane, getting the feeling of the club from the top of the backswing, feeling like it's gonna drop behind you as you pull your hands down at the ball. So the shaft drops behind you before it then comes out in front of you to hit the ball. Rather than this desire to throw the head and the shaft on the steep plane out in front of your hands, you've got to try and get into the concept of thinking about keeping the club behind you for a lot longer. Also thinking about, let's pretend we're swinging on a hoop. You want to try and start feeling like you're getting to the point, the furthest point away from you on this hoop, somewhere down by the ball. As soon as I start my downswing where the shaft gets steeper than my hand plane, the furthest point out of that hoop is actually going to be up here before you hit the ball, and then every part from thereafter is always obviously swinging to the left. So if I say that again, if my shaft plane gets steeper than my hand plane, this hoop is going to peak its furthest point away from me, say before the ball and everything else is coming left. Now, if we look at the, the, which I've done videos of, if we look at the hoop in real kind of precise movements, there is actually a case of that. So obviously the hoop points slightly left, you want to hit straight when hitting on the way down. But more as a basic kind of concept, rather than such a kind of scientifically based, what's exactly happening down there, more as a basic concept. And I have good success with this with people who struggle from this problem, feel like you're apexing that hoop to kind of get the furthest stretch down by the ball so when you get to the ball that club is reaching its furthest point before it then comes back towards you rather than for you you're reaching that furthest point there so before you've hit the ball you try to throw out to the furthest point and then pull across to hit the ball so two ways of doing this that's often quite a good thought just that sentences alone feel like you're hitting out to the ball for people feel like the circle the hoop is reaching its furthest point out in front of you in where the ball is that often does it for people to be honest that's a simple thought does it so what i mean by that is as i make my back swing as i start down i try and keep the club behind me so i keep the hub the club the um hoop behind me hoop behind me hoop behind me hoop behind me and then flick it out throw it out to hit the ball at the bottom and then the other way i've done it with students and this also works well sometimes hard to hit the ball this way but as they practice it more they get used to it it's feeling when you get to the top of your back swing just feel like that shaft is just dropping behind you, just dropping the angle of your hands. So I'm not saying dropping your hands, don't try and drop your hands, let your hands pull down towards the ball. What you're doing is dropping the shaft plane, so you're changing the angle of your wrist to try and reflect a little bit more what you did on the way back. And if you do that, you'll find your club path number straighten up and you'll hit much straight shots. We do see a little bit from the video when you get to the top of the back swing that your club face looks a little bit open. So just on a little sub note, I would definitely check your grip and think about what well, I've done lots of uh, videos on how your wrist should work back swing and down swing. Have a think about that also. Obviously the, the video is not sent from the best angle and I don't quite see all the bits because it's part of you goes out of the screen. But it's a great video to show people how the shaft plane gets steeper than the hand plane. And like I said at the start, there's many reasons. It can be grip, can be the way you're turning your body, it can be many, many reasons. 
but start playing with the reasons in the first one like I say think about trying to get that hoop to peek more out at the ball second one think about actually trying to drop the shaft hit down and then also look internally a bit more at the face and the hand relationship at the start I think you'll hit some better shots thanks for sending great videos there guys hope that helps let me know how you get on So question from Twitter here, what driver would you recommend for 12, 14 year olds that have been playing for a year? Good question that one, it's such a obviously wide open question because I don't know how strong you are, how tall you are, what ability you are. So really the main thing I would say is go and see someone who can help you, go and see your local pro, talk to them and take their advice. The biggest thing I see with young people and drivers is a desire to hit the one mum or dad uses is a desire to always try and hit one that's too long uh, and often too heavy. Um, so be careful when you're young, try and get a driver that's fitted for you and if it means cutting down, getting shorter lengths, using maybe ladies clubs instead of men's, all that kind of thing. I mean I used ladies clubs for a long time as a junior and I think it really helped me because I could actually handle the length and the, and the weight of them for a long time. What I see a lot from young people is an urgency to get the new tailor made that looks funky even though it doesn't come in the ladies so they get the men's too long and they're just holding it down here so go and see a pro they'll see your ability straight away as you hit a few shots maybe get on a few launch monitors and get their advice but my advice would be don't get one that's too long and too heavy for you that's what all juniors do and all i see is them struggle to hit straight shots and control the face because the club just just they can't handle it okay Hope that helps, thanks for posting, and we'll speak to you soon. So Connor here says, Mark, 17 degree hybrid or 17 degree fairy wood, what's the difference? Well, I haven't got 17 degrees here. I've got a 19 degree that can be bent down to a, a different loft because uh, it's got this sure fit neck, this is the this one, and I've got a 15, uh, sorry, an 18 degree five wood, so they're one degree apart. Biggest difference, five wood's got bigger head, so more stretched back, it's a wood style head, and the other massive difference is the length. So two inches, inch and a half longer on the five wood over the hybrid, and that's the thing you're gonna notice. So if these clubs are the same loft, so let's say I've got this uh, 913 hybrid here bent down to the right loft using the sure fit neck. This compared to my five wood, and that feels nice. Yeah, do a review on those, we'll be doing it soon. Um, this compared to a five wood, which I used loads of when I was younger, a five wood. The five wood to me, even though it's the same loft, because of that extra length, it's gonna allow me to swing it faster. And I feel like I could hit this considerably further the bigger head as well makes me feel like i can't play it quite as well from maybe a number of lies where the smaller head of the hybrid does feel close to that iron so it makes me feel like i can play from many different lies so the biggest thing for you to find it's not a loft if you've got two clubs that you're interested in loft is the same that's great you've got to then try and work out ways of fitting that into your bag so if i go to say a three iron and then my hybrid 19 degrees are they too similar because the length of this to my three iron is not going to be that far off. So then if I go to my five, which is longer, which makes me hit it further, is there a gap now, Pin, because it goes too far? See what I'm saying? You've got to fit these clubs into the gaps of the distances you're trying to hit each shot. It's not just a case of getting the right loft and off you go, because you've got to play the length into it as well. And you've also got to work into the fact of where you're going to be playing this club from. If it's from many scrubby lies, you might find hybrids easier to hit than the fairway wood. So same loft, different lamps, different styles of heads for different distances, different styles of shots. Hope that helps. Thanks for posting the question. What's going on here? Don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also thumbs up the video, post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.